I'm Matt Curry. Uh, I'm a, a doctoral intern at CAPS uh, and I work on the COPE team. I'm Chris Nito, psychologist and a member of the disordered eating team at CAPS, which is called COPE. Hi, my name is Callan Wachowski and I'm one of the assistant directors for the Body Project here at IU. Um, the Body Project is an amazing way to implement societal change within our campus here. Um, what it is, is that we run a workshop. Um, the workshop is once a year, but you can get involved twice a year. But um, the workshop, basically the point of the workshop is that there's a 60% improvement in body image through um, members who go through it. Um, so that's really, really great. It is um, based in Panhellenic, but anybody can get involved. You can get involved um, in a couple ways. Um, the first great way to get involved is to follow the Instagram, which is at IU Body Project. Um, and then another way you can get involved is you can actually attend the workshop and see for yourself how great it is. Um, to do that, you would email um, bproject at indiana.edu. Um, and then if once you go through that project, if you want to be one of the people that leads the project, you would email that same email and then um, go ahead and get trained to be a peer leader. And we hold those trainings twice a year. All enrolled IU students who paid the health fee have two free counseling visits every semester. So it is free to get started at the counseling center. And after that, for students who paid the health fee, the cost is less than $35, depending on what service you're using. The most important thing is to not wait for the friend to come to you. There's a lot of shame and confusion that goes along with disordered eating. And for that reason, people are often keeping the disorder to themselves. So approach your friend, name the signs that you've noticed that made you concerned about them. Tell the friend that you're concerned about them and ask if they're willing to seek help. They can start with a medical appointment. They can start with a dietitian appointment or they can start with a counseling appointment. All of those are available here on our campus. If you're worried about a friend that, you know, might be struggling with their body image or with disordered eating and you just kind of have a hunch, um, one of the most important things to remember is to not comment on their appearance at all because that can trigger thoughts that can actually be a little bit detrimental to their health and their mental health. Um, you want to just um, sort of do what Chris said and you know ask maybe if they're doing okay in general and just stuff like that you you don't want to make any content comments on their appearance or anything definitely I think um, a normal relationship with food and exercise or maybe a healthy relationship with food and exercise is is one uh, that's not causing you um, a significant amount of distress or creating problems in your life with your health or with your relationships. Um, if it is, I definitely encourage you to try to seek the help of a professional because these are far from hopeless issues and there are a lot of ways that we can help you. We've all had a lot of stress in the last year and there's lots of different ways to respond in a healthy way to stress. I hear people say exercise all the time and for some people that's great, but I hate exercise. That's not the way I would uh, have a healthy response to stress. So it's whatever makes you feel fulfilled, refills your soul, makes you feel happy, makes you feel motivated. So it, there is no wrong kinds of ways to respond to stress, except for the ones that you already know, like alcohol use, drug use, things like that. Um, body dysmorphia is different from paying attention to physique. Um, in that it causes the person a significant amount of uh, distress or problems um, in areas of their life that are important. Um, it also involves uh, what the person perceives to be a physical defect in their body that other people can't see or something very minor. Um, so it's, it's different um, in that it's not about different life priorities. Um, people with this diagnosis also tend to have uh, kind of repetitive uh, behaviors like mirror checking a lot, seeking a lot of reassurance, uh, among other things. Yeah, um, a couple ways I do that in my day-to-day -day life is 
I've, I've found that unfollowing people on social media that I find myself comparing myself to, that's really, really helpful and sort of replacing that in your Instagram feed with more positive Instagram accounts. Um, there, there's a few um, body image activists like Iskra Lawrence, which is, she's a great one. She's a um, model for Airy, I know. Um, and then Quotes by Christy is a really good account. Um, it, those quotes, like kind of help you stay grounded. This one's really good. It says, it's a lot easier to judge someone than it is to try and understand them. So like stuff like that, like it's just, it, it makes you a little bit more like present in your day-to-day -day life, definitely. Um, and then aside from that, I would definitely just say, waking up and realizing every day that there is a separation between your worth as a human being and your worth in the eyes of diet culture and your worth in the eyes of capitalism and all that stuff because a lot of you know marketing ploys are based on you feeling bad about yourself you know so um a really important thing to realize is that your worth simply just comes from being a, an alive human with a soul that's literally it so i'm um, just reminding yourself of that every day is really really helpful definitely research studies have been very clear in showing that when we speak out loud or to ourselves uh, negatively about our bodies about what it looks like about what we're eating about exercising or not exercising or when we say those things about other people's bodies and exercise and food intake all that negative body talk has a negative effect not just on the person who said it but also on anyone else who overhears it. It's toxic, it's infectious. So a really important concrete step is to stop yourself from saying those things, or you can replace it with something neutral. If you can't yet get to positive, start with something neutral or something specific to your body's function, what it does instead of what it looks like.